So hiya, my name is Paul Menasar. I lived in flat 33, Grenfell Tower, on the sixth floor, and I was living and caring for my, my sick uncle. I'm Mrs. Babudu. I live in Grenfell Tower with Tishondre Patrilia, my grandson. Definitely say life was, uh, wasn't amazing, but I'd say life was, uh, life was okay. I never felt I lacked anything in that tower. I was happy. I was working, playing football, being very social with my friends, going out, doing things that any other 22-year-old would do at the time. Around this time last year, we moved into Grenfell Tower from Wandsworth with Tishandre and uh, we were just busy settling down, settling down in Grenfell Tower. It was always, I mean, a good sort of vibe to be around. Lovely community, lovely environment. Everybody in the tower are so friendly and welcoming. It was a very good place to actually be and actually go up around. I felt like it was home. In 2010, I lost my mum and my dad in the space of three months. My mum had a heart, uh, brain tumour and my dad had a heart attack and I came home and I found him dead. I feel like, in a sense, cursed by all this, that out of every tower block in this, in this country, it had to be that one that goes up on fire. Six months on since the Grenfell Tower fire, Paul and I have come to revisit what remains of the block. What's it like just walking back to the tower? It brings back, mem it brings back memories of uh, every day I used to like do things on a day-to-day -day basis like going to football, going to work and stuff like that. But it just looks so much more quiet than it, how it used to be around here. It's like a ghost town sort of thing. You yeah. look at it. I was fast asleep and I woke up to the sounds of screaming from people. And obviously, knowing the procedure for the building was stay in your flat, I didn't take too much notice of it. So I started coughing quite a lot. So I said to myself, I have to go downstairs. So then I literally went down the stairwell. I get down to the bottom, and as soon as I got out of the building, I looked up, and then from the third floor all the way up to the 24th floor on one side, it was covered in black smoke, or covered in flames. I could see people, dead bodies that Obviously, I could tell they probably jumped off the building to try and escape the fire. And seeing the fire rise and going into people's flats and the screaming that I heard that night in particular, and it's just so traumatic. But yeah, I think the best word to describe it would be lifeless. Lifeless? Yeah. This Grenfell Tower fire is worse than losing my mum and my dad. People that you meet on a day-to-day -day basis, people you make friends with in the lift, you don't know if they passed away or not. I mean, memories that I've had in that flat, gone. It was those memories that led him to go back to the tower last month with police supervision to collect items from his flat that survived the fire. I had to f literally force myself to go back in there. And the only reason why I went back in there was because of this jewelry box and that's the only thing left I've got of my mum and her pictures that were actually inside of it. Can we see what's inside? Of course you can. So that's one of the ones that were actually completely damaged, but I still took it for the water damage of the flat. It's my mum's grave. So that's like me and my mum there when she was pretty ill. But this is a picture that means a lot to me and I'm really glad that I got the chance to go back in there and uh, have this keep this picture of her. Seeing more pictures like that. Me and my mum. Uh, and these, these pictures, you know, they're priceless. This meant the world to me. This would be like losing another life to me because these pictures are the only things I've got left of my mum, especially her jewellery box. So to lose all that would be losing her all over again. This time last year I was very excited about Christmas. This time of year it's all about being close, going out with friends. A year on, I mean, how things have changed in such a quick time. Normally we get a Christmas tree for the little boy, which we went shopping for together. Well, this Christmas I don't feel like I'll be 
could be myself. I've never spent Christmas in the hotel without cooking for my family. It's not, it's not a good situation to be in, especially over Christmas. It's not going to be a happy time. Christmas is meant for a family to be together. Right now, I don't feel no optimism whatsoever. I don't feel excited in any way, shape or form. I just feel lonely. Like Paul, Mrs. Mamudu has also faced loneliness since the fire. Living in a hotel with her grandson, she's lacked community and hasn't been able to cook for six months. Today, she's cooking for the first time since the fire with her daughter Khadija and other survivors at a local community center. Ashley, I need yep. help. Yep, I'm coming. How can I, I need help? to stick some of this put in here. What is that? Coconut oil. Cool, got it, got it. Khadija. Mrs. Mamudu, how much of this do you want? More. More, okay, more. She wants more. It's a real privilege to be here. This is the first time that Mrs. Mamudu has been able to cook since the fire. She's still six months on, living in a hotel. And this is a big deal for her. She is cooking some Nigerian cuisine with some of her family and some of the local residents. And there's a real sense of community and home in the lead up to Christmas. It's a really nice environment for her. How's that been for you? Uplifting. Uplifting. How so? Makes me just feel... For a moment. For a moment, for the people we survived together, to all get together and be happy. We're entering a new year. What hopes do you have for 2018? Nothing. Blank. Because I don't know where I'll be. Right now, things are bleak. If we're being honest, you have been offered four properties. Yes. Why, why have you turned them all down? They said, Grenfell, we lost. They will give us the property like what we lost. They came and they took down our requirements more than eight times. Still, yes. Still, yes, they will still wrong. take us to a property. I cannot go in with my wheelchair. Do you think survivors have been too picky? That's the wrong word to use. They are not being given the right thing after being assessed. I'm now mostly in pain. All we eat now is restaurant. We, we cannot cook six months. Six months on, I don't think the, I don't think things have changed dramatically. I mean, you still have a lot of people that are, would say, in temporary flats or temporary accommodation. There are still people in hotels. Even me, at my age, I'm 69. I have changed. Tishandre has to totally changed. He was a happy little go lucky child, but now he's like. The reverse. I always feel sad. I don't really ever want to leave my hotel room. We have no dignity, no respect. Nobody even remembers we are there. People don't deserve this. They don't. They didn't put themselves in this predicament. This time last year, football played a significant role in Paul's life. Since the fire, however, he hasn't played. Wanting to move forward with his life, this is the first time that Paul's come back to his training ground. Do you think you're going to be able to just forget about Grenfell and everything just for half an hour to an hour whilst, whilst you catch up with your mates and play some football? It's going to, for me, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. But I think I've got to try. It's probably a little bit rusty, to be <laughs> really honest with you. But I'll let the, I'll, I'll let the football do the talking. <laughs> OK, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. What's How are you doing, mate? Yeah, not bad. Nice to see you. Come, you're right, yeah? It's not every day you get you're a hug right, off yeah? this guy. No, <laughs> it's not every day. I wasn't going to hug you, but I will. <laughs> the boys are waiting for you, look. See you, you're right, mate. Yeah. 
Football coach Rico has been a massive source of support for Paul both before and after the fire, having even raised funds to help Paul get back on his feet. All right, I want you to get everything out of your head. Forget it. For one hour, you're going to get away from whatever's happened and we're going to get onto football, yeah? Football is the answer, mate. All right, come on. Let's go! Big games on Sunday! Great corner, Menisa. It took my mind off it being back here, having you shouting at me. That's what took my mind off it a little bit. But at the same time, I know I need to get back into shape now, like start coming football more, start coming back here, use my motivator before. Good. Do you think you're going to keep coming back every week now, yeah? Yeah, 100%. So. Promise me that, yeah? Promise you. OK, good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, take you up on that, yeah? Right, your teammates are waiting for you, so jump back on that pitch. Yes, Vanessa. Keep going, son. Keep going. Keep going. As survivors of the Grenfell Tower fire take the necessary steps to rebuild their lives, scores still remain homeless, dispersed across West London hotels and service apartments. And as Christmas looms, it's the small acts of community and recreation that will provide survivors with any sense of normality and hope for the year ahead. Yummy.